Hi friends, it's Reverend Laurie Gist with Unity of Ocala. Although you may not recognize me right now. <laughs> I have my hair shoved back in a headband. No makeup on. I just rolled off the yoga mat. I thought if I don't get this Zoom recording done early in the morning, the day will go by and then the weekend will be gone. So it's been a busy time for me. As you know, I started some new art classes and Anything new is challenging. I haven't taken a class for a while. All of the students in the class, including the teacher, are young enough to be my children. One, young enough to be my grandchild, or at least she could date my grandson because she's a year older than him. So I'm surrounded by this new energy and this new zeal, but it's a little taxing. It's a long drive. It's about an hour, 15 minutes drive back and an hour, 15 minutes home. So it's pushing this 62 year old energy around a bit, but I'm thriving, I'm loving it. But I realized here at the end of week three, I'm neglecting self care. It's so easy to push those things out of the way when we get busy, it's the holidays, we've got so much to do. I haven't been to the gym in a few weeks and it's starting to weigh on me in all of those ways. So this morning I deliberately got up early because I've had a very busy day. My mom's got a doctor's appointment this morning where she starts her shots for her bone strength because she has lost bone strength over the years and has developed osteoporosis and the doctor's recommended shots. We have to go to a cancer center to get those. So my mom is filled with this anxiety and these emotions. So I wanted to be in as good of a space as I possibly could. So I rolled out of bed, brushed my teeth, rolled onto the yoga mat, and I spent the last 45 minutes in delicious stretching, not pushing any poses that I normally do after I've been doing it a long time. I just let my body tell me what it needed, the stretches it needed. And I pushed my muscles into those stretches and then relaxed them and relaxed them. Yoga for those of us of a certain age and era can be so exhilarating if we don't try to keep up with the youngsters. So I wanna talk a little bit today about self-care. I like to share with you everything that I need. I think we teach what we have to learn or what we have to be reminded of. Self-care is something that is easy for me to, ne to neglect, but the more times around the sun I go, the more important it is for me to focus on self-care. So last night I reignited my ritual of winding down my home, cleaning all the surfaces, sweeping out the old, preparing for a brand new day. I lit my candles. I put on, if you were in my house this morning, you would smell some delicious aromas, not incense. I don't do that in the morning, but in the morning I like to put in essential oils. I've got tangerine in my little diffuser. It smells heavenly in here. Oh, I just got a whiff of cinnamon buds. <laughs> That's my ego saying, now it's breakfast time, but we're not gonna do cinnamon buds. Well, that does sound good though. And then a long, cool drink of water, some stretches, greeting the morning sun, and just listening to my body. Because I do get accustomed to my favorite yoga routine, but I'm focusing this whole week, and I hope you're joining me on listening intuitively. We all know our bodies pretty well. We ignore a lot of our body. <laughs> But when we tune into it, it will tell us. And as we begin to move it, even if it's just a gentle little stretch down onto the mat, you will feel a natural inclination to stretch, release, stretch, and release. So that's what I did. And then I just opened up my computer to Zoom with you. So I hope you are rising on this beautiful Friday, December 2nd. Oh my gosh, this is my beloved one of my best friends forever and ever, my mother-in-law, Doris, who was the love of my life, the teacher of all things wise and wonderful and hillbilly-ish. And I am reminded every time I see a yellow rose of my mother-in-law, because she would, she has two children, 
my husband, Michael, and his beloved sister, Jacqueline. And on their birthdays, every year from as early as they could remember, she would send them a single long-stemmed yellow rose. We have a yellow rose bush planted just outside my husband's window so he could see it, especially when he was so ill, it was blooming beautifully. But I'm going to go get me a single yellow rose. I hope I can find one today, I'm sure I will. And just think of her today and all the lessons that she taught me and the love we had and how she loved my children and loved us all and was the true glue to our family. So I honor Mama today. I hope you're thinking of someone special that you on this December 2nd, as we begin a busy holiday season, can remember someone special. Don't forget to light your Shabbat candles this evening as we celebrate globally a time of peace, a season of joy, a season through Advent and Hanukkah, bringing great light to the Advent journey and of Kwanzaa, community. Boy, we need that. And we are the light bearers. We are the ones we've been waiting for. I'll be telling you all about my new classes that I'm taking these art classes that I'm falling in love with. I'm actually, thank you, God, getting excited about art again in a whole new way. And I've had to throw everything out the window that I have ever learned. All of these decades, I have been doing art, teaching art, enjoying art, had to throw all those techniques, all those learned muscles and memory out the window, because this is all new. I'll share my journey as we go. I'll even bring some pictures of what we're doing. I'm just going to let my spirit choose our closing poem, Susceptible to Light. If you don't have this book, please get it. And all of her work, Shalon Harkin. She's an extraordinary writer. <laughs> I did not plan this. I swear on my life, I did not plan this. I just opened the poem on self-care. Oh, it's going to be a divine day. It's going to be a divine day. Oh, that was mama. She so chose this one. This is for all of us. Self-care, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, self-care. Perhaps we need to give dimension to the meaning of self-care. Self-care can mean finally sinking into the dark pools of your shadows you've long avoided. Oh, I want to discuss this after church. Not this Sunday, but next. Finally, self-care can mean finally sinking into the dark pool of your shadows you've long avoided. Oh, what lurks in there? Self-care can mean encountering the self-spun and inherited veils we've cloaked over our luminous spirit and inquiring. Am I more than that? Self-care can mean at last entering the forest of your terrors to realize the fears you'd othered are all howling like night animals within you. Oh, this is rich. Every sentence is worthy of a class. And realizing the outside was always within brings new wisdom. The outside was always within. Self-care self can mean finally looking yourself in the eyes into the black holes of your pupils and their wild desire to annihilate every untruth you've held dear. Ooh. And within all this, self-care can still mean we get to eat a little extra chocolate. <laughs> That's my message for this Shabbat Friday. We're going to talk about that after church, not this Sunday, next Sunday. Janice will be with you this Sunday because I'm off to help my folks in South Florida. And she continues the Advent message. Be kind to yourself. Do a little stretching. Put on something soothing to listen to. Put something in your diffuser that is soothing to your senses. Be okay with yourself and your world around you. And please remember, God loves you. I love you. Have a fabulous week.